Wednesday, cinema chain Cineworld started dropping again today after an 80% funds last week. Now, the firm said it was considering a voluntary Chapter 11 filing in the U.S. as it seeks to cut its $5 billion debt pile. Now, our next guest has been short Cineworld for over four years and says observing the demise of Cineworld has been like watching a tiresome disaster movie populated by B-list actors. Welcome to my life. Uh, Barry Lawrence joins us now. He's founder of Argonaut Capital Partners. Barry, I've seen way too many bad films. If you look at what we could have foreseen with Cineworld, what could they have done differently? Well, unfortunately, I think the, the ending in our tiresome disaster movie was entirely predictable. Um, and that is that the, the management team at Cineworld uh, used too much uh, financial debt to acquire an empire in a sunset industry. And if you think even before COVID, this was a company that had three and a half billion of of financial debt and approximately another four billion dollars of financial leases uh, uh, it's now got five billion of financial debt and it probably uh, owes Cineplex uh, uh, another billion so uh, a company which pre-covid was doing one and a half billion of EBITDA probably nowadays uh, will struggle to do a billion of EBITDA the capital structure of this company is completely unsustainable and that's why it's going bust. Mm. Uh, Barry, hindsight is a wonderful thing but we look back a couple of years, financing was cheap, there was a rationale wasn't there for this company to borrow and, and to expand, the cinema remains attractive, are you underestimating and, and not giving them enough credit for having to, to face up to that pandemic impact? Well, I, I mean I think during the, the pandemic, let's be clear, Cineworld took um, up a furlough money for, for pretty much all of its UK employees. It deferred its rents, and at the same time, its management paid itself millions of dollars still. Uh, this is not a company you should uh, feel sorry for in any way. Uh, the, the, the problem is that um, the cinema industry was always in structural decline through uh, streaming, uh, services on TV through the end of the exclusivity window and frankly through the poor quality of Hollywood films that are produced which can't help hold a candle to those produced by previous generations. But Barry, there was a talk about you know some of the gaming worlds being live streamed and that bringing in big bucks. It, it was also streaming of theaters live that would have brought a, a new kind of consumer and a new kind of audience to, to the cinema. What are the lessons learned from Cineworld that you could transpose into the industry or other industries for that matter? Well, the cinema industry is, is clearly um, a, a low return, pretty poor industry in structured decline. That means that it's, it's not prudent to use so much debt to finance the business. So there's a reason why Cineworld's gone bust and other, uh, and other uh, cinema chains haven't. And they're all pretty average businesses. Cineworld just used far too much leverage and was far too aggressive in its acquisition strategy. Uh, Barry, how much of its debt do you think will ultimately be, be recoverable? And, and what do you expect to happen uh, to equity holders in this business? Uh, equity holders will get zero. Um, convert holders will also, will also have nothing. Uh, there's, there's about four billion of secured debt, one billion of, um, of super preferred debt. I suspect that, that all of the collateral is, is, is in the super preferred debt, so they'll be made whole. Uh, the four billion of, of secured debt holders will be converted to equity. There'll be a debate about what the enterprise value of this company should be. Those further up the capital structure will argue for a lower enterprise value. Those further down, obviously because they want to be included in the value, will be argue for a bigger enterprise value. But let's say they come up with a figure of three billion. I would suspect that the secured debt holders get converted to equity with a 50% haircut. Uh, Barry, it's very clear that actually, you know, COVID played a huge part in this. I know they were over leveraged. I know they probably expanded too much, but could they have survived this had we not had COVID? Um, I think had we not had COVID, it would have survived for longer, but the business strategy wasn't a very good business strategy. 
uh, for all of the reasons we've previously talked about. So, uh, if you like, COVID brought this to a head. But let's be clear about this. Last spring, the share price of Cinnabon was £1.30. It had a market cap of $1.5 billion. That was post-COVID. The management could have decided at any time to raise equity to repair the balance sheet, and they didn't. And you'll have to ask them why they didn't do that. Yeah. I suspect it's because they didn't want their own equity to be diluted, and they thought that they could manage the company on a wing and a prayer. Mm. Uh, Barry, you touched on this, the, the streaming services, the competition uh, provided there. Of course, streaming companies, the likes of Netflix and others, have, have faced their own challenges and have to wrestle with those now. How are you thinking about that space uh, going forward? Well, it, it's, um, I think it, it rather typifies some of the issues in the, in the tech sector and that you've had uh, a decade where investors have just fallen over themselves to allocate nearly all of their capital to, to tech. And as a result, even though there's demand for the product, it's highly competitive and returns are coming down. Uh, and frankly, that's yeah. why also inflation is so high in the real economy, because all of that money went to tech and none of it went to to the old economy. So this dichotomy in markets, I think, is why you have high inflation in the real economy, the best opportunities in areas uh, like energy and fossil fuels. And actually, I think you've got a structural bear market uh, in tech and, and you've got structurally high inflation and therefore lower valuations of the equity market. Uh, Barry, what's the worst film you've ever seen? And I was trying, kind of, you know, as we were talking about Beatles movies, I was kind of thinking, is it something like Shark Sharknado? I think they've done six, or Snakes on a Plane. A uh, Cats. I think Cats, cats was the, was the cats. biggest box office film I've seen recently. Um, and I think, look, the thing about Cinema is, look, it will survive as a as a as a company. Uh, it's just gone into Chapter Eleven. The company will operate. I'll go on operating uh, as as previous, but the capital structure will just change. Right. The equity holders or some of the debt holders will get wiped out, but it will re-emerge. And the question is, is it going to re-emerge under the same family management team or a different management team? And frankly, I wouldn't be given the producer of Cats the opportunity to make a sequel. <laughs> I think that's the key headline from this, isn't it? This interview with Barry Norris. That's the worst movie he's ever seen. Uh, joining a long list of critics of that film, by the way. Barry Norris, uh, founder of Argonaut uh, Capital Partners, not contrary when it comes to his hatred of Cats, the movie. Thank you for joining us. Uh,